everyone, it's Lisa from the blog FarmhouseOnBoon.com and today I'm going to show you how to sew a simple little girl's dress. Sewing is one of my favorite passions. I have a lot of tutorials on here, but I've never shared some girls' clothing. I've shared an apron, but sewing little girls' dresses is by far my favorite. I actually, over on my blog, farmhouseonboon.com, along with the written instructions for this tutorial, shared kind of my backstory on sewing and some pictures of dresses that I used to create. I went crazy for a while and there are just so many styles, some of them kind of goofy, but I also just explain how I got to this point now where I can sew and just all of the trial and error that took and experimentation. So if you're interested in that, check that out over on the blog. But today I wanna to show you specifically how to make this little bow back apron dress, which is what I'm calling it. Not the most official name, but I just really love playing around and experimenting with different fabric choices and colors and designs. And so this one you could adjust in so many different ways. You could add a ruffle to the bottom. You could change the bow around a little bit. I'll go more into the variations at the end of this video, but now let's dive right in and show you how to make it. To begin, start by cutting out all the pattern pieces over on the blog, farmhouseonboon.com. I'll link it the description below I have all of the exact dimensions of the pattern pieces from size 2t all the way up to girls 810 so for any age girl from 2 to 10 and then you could of course just kind of adjust it a little bit if you want to make it for someone a little bit older or maybe a baby so first I started by cutting out the bodice I made my daughter a size 7 you need a rectangular piece from the lining fabric and then from the main fabric Then to make the armholes, I cut out a four by two inch rectangular piece of paper and then rounded off the corner. This is gonna be the little pattern piece I used to make the arms. I folded the bodice piece in half with right sides together and added the little pattern piece to create the armhole and then repeated the same thing for the lining fabric. Next, for the back bodice piece, I cut a rectangle that was the same width as underneath the front bodice armpit to the bottom of the front bodice and the same length as well. Basically, you just wanna use your front bodice piece which you'll get from the measurements and the armhole cutout as the guide to cut the back bottom piece. So you just trace along the bottom and that'll make a strip that'll be for the back bodice piece. And then of course I cut out the skirt. Again, measurements on the blog for that. Now I chose to add the optional bottom panel just for a little bit more color. On the blog, I show how you can make the skirt full length and not add the bottom piece or you can just subtract six inches from the skirt and add a bottom panel to add a little bit more color. If you wanna keep it really simple, just don't even add it. I cut my bottom panel piece from the yellow fabric. I just made it the exact same width as the skirt piece, which in my case is the floral. Next, I cut out the strap pieces. Then I cut out a little detail to add to the front of the apron piece, again optional, but I just like to add a little bit more color in every place that I can. You'll see where it goes when it all comes together. Next I do like I usually do and lay out all the pieces just to see if I'm liking the way the colors look before I go sewing it together. Next to prepare the strap pieces, I folded one raw edge down toward the inside and pressed it in place. And then I just folded the strap piece in half and sewed all the way down the long edge with about a quarter inch seam. Then I used a safety pin to turn it right side out. After that, I just pressed it flat so that all the seams were laying nice and then headed over to my machine to top stitch all the way around it. A top stitch is just a stitch that goes really close to the edge and it's just there to make things a little bit prettier and cleaner. Then I just repeated that with the other strap piece.
to assemble the bodice piece, I took the main fabric front bodice and the main fabric back bodice, placed them on top of each other with right sides together, and then just sewed down the two side seams. I repeated that same process with the lining fabric. Next, I put the lining fabric inside the main fabric with right sides together and lining up the side seams. So I just put a little pleat in the straps. This is optional. I like it to where the straps don't come out very wide, but just kind of small. So I just kind of folded them over as you can see here and then stitched them in place before adding them to the bodice. After that, I placed them inside of the bodice that I just put together. Toward the outside edge of the top part, I made sure to face the front of my little fold towards the main fabric piece. That way when I pull it out, you'll be able to see the right side of that pleat and then the right side of my nice fabric and not the lining fabric. And I just sewed those in place about a quarter inch from the outside edge of the top bodice. Now the reason for that is so that I can sew down the sides and that those straps will fall right to the outside edge of the bodice. And then I just sewed all the way around the bodice pieces to sew them together, making sure to catch the straps and leaving the bottom open to turn it right side out. Then I just turned it right side out to hide all the raw edges inside and pressed all the seams flat with my iron. Next, I just top stitched all the way around the bodice to make everything lay nice and flat. Next, I prepared the apron piece. Again, this is optional. I think it adds a little bit of whimsy and playfulness to a dress. You can totally leave this part out. It can just be a bodice with a skirt, but I think it's just so fun to add the apron. I just went around three sides of the apron and hemmed it. So I pressed each side up a half inch and another half inch to hide the raw edges inside, pressed it and then sewed all the way around. Now, it would make more sense to add the little strip of fabric detail to the bottom of the apron before hemming it, but I didn't think of that. So I added it after, but either way, it's totally fine. You could even add a couple of stripes of different fabric to it. You can play around with it. I just added that one strip of floral fabric to kind of tie things together. Next, I centered the apron on one skirt piece, and then I just sewed it in place just to make sure that it doesn't shift around whenever I'm doing my gathering stitches and attaching it to the bodice. Next, I just put the skirt pieces right sides together and sew down the side seams and added a serging stitch just to make everything finish. Now, if you don't have a serger, you can use a zigzag stitch for this. Next, I took my little panel pieces for the bottom, laid them right sides together, sewed down the side seams and serged, and then just placed the bottom band inside the skirt piece with right sides together and sewed all the way around to attach it. Make sure to always line up the side seams when sewing the skirt band to the skirt. I went ahead and searched that seam as well just to make everything nice and clean. Again, a tight zigzag stitch if you don't have a serger works just fine. I just pressed the seam flat and went around with another top stitch. Next, I put the hem in the bottom of the skirt by pressing it over about a half inch and another half inch, and then just sewed it with about a half inch seam. You can tell I'm not super precise.
Okay, to put in the gathering stitch. The first step is to make your stitch length as long as possible and then to turn your tension up as high as it can go. And that, when you're pushing your fabric through, will actually create gathers for you. I like to always put in two gathering stitches, one for the front of the skirt, one at the side of the skirt, and then I always stop on the side seam so that I know where my strings are to pull from. Next, I just tugged on the strings ever so slightly, being careful not to break them, until the top width of my skirt equaled the width of the bottom of my bodice to line them up. Then I just lined them up at the side seams and pinned it in place and then stitched the gathers to the bodice. To make pretty gathers, I like to sew on the gather side so that I can put my stitch along the gather so I can see what's going on as opposed to sewing from the front bodice where you can't see the gathers on the back. You can get some wonky things with the gathers turning under and getting caught in weird places. I like to make sure that the gathers are facing up and to stitch as close as possible to my gathering stitch. If you stitch way down from it, you're gonna have some weird puckers and things like that, but just stitch really close as possible to that gathering stitch. After it goes through your machine, make sure to serge it or add a zigzag stitch to make those edges nice and clean. Now the final step is adding the buttonholes in the back to pull the straps through. I normally use my machine upstairs that has more, um, that does everything really automatically. So this is my first time actually using my buttonhole foot here on my more manual machine. To do that, I just followed the instructions on my machine for the buttonhole. For buttonhole placement, I just put a pin in the center of my back bodice, and then I just place the buttonholes on either side of that pin, the width of the presser foot. That's how I make sure that they're nice and even and centered on the back bodice. Basically, it made me go in an A, B, C, D pattern with the knob, which just was a four step process that sewed the bottom of the buttonhole, then it went up the left side, the top of the buttonhole, and then down the right side. It was actually really simple, pretty straightforward to figure out. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind with buttonholes, you always want to start at the top of your garment because the, the buttonhole maker is going to, on all machines I've ever seen, go backwards. Now you don't need very big buttonholes for these ties because you don't want anything too saggy and loose. So I just do about a half to a three quarter inch hole. All that was left to do is try it on my daughter, tie the bow and let her enjoy. Now imagine all the colors and patterns you can make with this. I have gone through phases of my life where I've gotten pretty much obsessed with making dresses because there's just so many possibilities. It's so fun. I'll add ruffles and layers of ruffles and bows and aprons and little strips on the bodice. You can really use your imagination with this. You can add so many fun things. Over on the blog post, I have all the measurements so that you can make a size from 2T all the way up to 810. Also, I just have my sewing history and pictures of my daughter when she was two with all of the things I used to sew for her. Some of them are kind of funny, kind of embarrassing, but just to show you how much fun sewing can be. You don't have to be confined to a pattern. You can definitely just whip things up with your own imagination and make it fun. So head on over to blogfarmhouseonmood.com to check all that out and get your measurements. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. If you're new here, I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse. Mm -hmm.